Hey, it's JJ. How are we doing? I'm out in the woods today. Um, you're probably thinking, this looks really familiar because I've just shot a video previous to this one and we're still on the same subject. So, just done a three year long term test review on a fireball stove and I'm still in the woods so I'm still going to do something about it. So, bear with. You're not watching the same thing twice. Although you can watch the other one again if you want to. The fireball stove, yeah. I've had it three years down the line. This is a video about the initial use, prep, and the maintenance, yeah, looking after it, okay? And this isn't just gonna to apply to the firebox stove. It can be the, the, the bush box XL, the Bushcraft Essentials, a Lixida, a honey stove, a TBS Salamander, any folding portable wood burning stove this is what this is going to apply to but i'm specifically doing it on this because this is what i use and this is what i love okay so it's stainless steel okay it's high quality stainless steel there's no warp there's no deflection on it but you still got to look after this product okay i use mine three or four times a week in real busy periods throughout the year okay and i've had it three years i can't just keep using it it will just get absolutely obliterated so there's a few things that I do when I'm using the firebox stove, okay? First of all, I'm choosing the right kind of wood, all right? So predominantly where I am in the woods, okay? Although I'm sat on a cut down pine tree with a pine tree behind me. Predominantly the wood that I use in this is either silver birch or hazel. Occasionally the odd bit of hornbeam um, or a bit of oak, yeah? Sometimes a little bit of cherry. But generally, hazel, silver birch, they're really easy, okay, to source, to prep, and get into the firebox stove. Um, they also burn really, really efficiently, okay. I don't use pine, okay. I've got this little spot in the woods where I come to, yeah, I'm surrounded by pine, but I generally don't use conifers, pines, firs, okay. That's because of their high resin content, okay. And when they're burning, okay, some of that resin can come out and it leaves a horrible residue okay even after the firebox is burnt you can get that residue that spits and it sits in the corners and that okay and it becomes really really hard to clean also can soot it up quite a bit so i just generally tend to find a couple of wood species that i know are going to be easier to use and wipe down okay so i'm out in the woods okay I'm using the correct type of wood that I know is going to burn efficiently, okay? So I've got not much ash to get rid of and that afterwards, okay? And that's about being more efficient, okay? After that, okay, I'm going to let this go out. I'll show you a quick couple of things that I do once the firebox has gone out and then the last part of the video, I'll be back at home and it will show the cleaning and the maintenance that I do. Anyway, I'm going to let that burn. I'm going to have a brew. I'll catch you on a bit. Bye. Right, firebox has gone out, okay. As soon as it's gone out, make sure all them embers are completely died away. Turn it upside down, whatever ash there is. Helps if you put the glove on the right hand. <laughs> get it, get the ash, disperse the ash, douse the ground with water. I don't need to teach you guys this, you already know all that anyway, okay. so. Turn it upside down, make sure you push down the bottom, make sure the wind flap is down and then I just slightly turn it in on itself so it starts to compress because obviously it's expanded up a little bit while it's been heated. You want to get it folded away pretty quickly. The ash pan I tend to just lean lightly against the side leave it for a few minutes the beauty of the firebox stove is i mean it's so effective at burning once it's done with all those aeration holes in generally within six or seven minutes after it's gone out you can pick it up yeah you can pick it up yeah that's it it's as simple as that okay but you've burnt wood 
there's going to be some soot, there's going to be some ash. So I don't tend to worry so much about the inside, okay? But I'm just going to fold it so it's almost flat, okay? Just find some detritus, some leaf mulch that's not been near your fire, okay? Just give it a quick, a quick rub over just to get rid of some of that ash. Now obviously that is going to make it slightly sort of damp. That's not a problem, but all we're actually mainly focused on is let's get some slightly dry stuff. It's getting rid of any sort of soot that's on there so it doesn't dry on too much. Give that a quick wipe over. Again, turn it out. Give it a bit of a shake. Good, got rid of most of the soot. Look, you can see, yeah, this is well scored, it's well tarnished, you know, it's had six, seven hundred uses. Okay, it has been cleaned a few times since then, but it is going to get dirty, okay? The, the metal is going to get burnished, so we're just going to loosely put it away. There's no need to put all the fire sticks and that back into it, because when we get home, we're going to give this a clean. For now, it's good to go. We're going to pack it back into the canvas bag. We're going to take that home. And then you'll see me at home with a brew, maybe a beer, and I'll just go over the actual cleaning. Because this is how you protect this product long-term use. So I'll see you later on, and uh, scrubbing time. See you in a bit, see you in a bit, see you in a bit, see you in a bit. Bye, 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 bye. Right, so I'm back home. I've had a firebox burn got changed, doing it out in the back garden, otherwise I get told off for making a mess indoors in the kitchen. Right, so, had a good burn. Let's just get these bits out. Get those little bits and bobs off. So as I said, just as I was leaving the woods, you know, give it a quick dry down, find some bracken, find some leaf mulch just to give it a dry down and uh, try and get some of that soot off which I've already done now we've just got the firebox so for the rest of it you're basically going to need four things one bucket of hot soapy water two Brillo pad three some oil and I'll touch on the oil a little bit later and the fourth thing a bit of elbow grease Right, I'm just going to pop it in. Now, a lot of people like to have some patina on their products, which is really great, and this does have a lot of patina, but I just need to give it a really good clean up, a real good clean, because it's not been done in absolute ages. And we'll keep most of that patina on there. You know, this thing's had, I don't know, 600 burns and that and it's going to develop that patina but all we want to do is just really get a lot of that soot off that builds up over time even when you're giving it a quick wipe down and it's just good practice just to keep it as clean as you can so that each time you're using it your hands are not getting absolutely filthy when you're setting it up and then you're doing your food prep so you don't have to constantly be cleaning your hands and that uh, it's just quite a therapeutic thing to do and we're just gonna really get to town on this start giving it a scrub so I'm keeping it in the open formation it's just easier you can see what you're actually cleaning Give it a quick once over on all four sides. Let's just get a bit busy on that side with a storm flap. So yeah, I just do this every couple of months. A real good clean. And as we're going into winter, it's really going to be used a lot more just for them colder days going into winter. And, uh, pop your hand inside. 
just for the, the flap down the bottom. Just giving that all a good initial scrub. And then we just quickly do the insides as well. Because you do, you get that residue and that build up. And, uh, if you're not careful, some of them smaller holes that are in there can start getting <laughs> start getting a bit clogged up with resin and soot and stuff like that. So again, it's just a really good practice to do. Now. I'm going to be using oil later on and that during the summer and that because I'm doing a lot of food cooking and that on there just to oil the hinges you know you can use a food grade oil like an olive oil or something like that sunflower oil it doesn't really matter but during the winter what I prefer to do is because it's going to be a lot wetter when we're going out there I'm going to be using WD-40 and that so there we go there we go so I'm going to carry on giving this a good clean and then we'll get to the next bit so we're going to stop you. I'm going to carry on scrubbing and I'll catch you in a bit. About 20 minutes later, we are all done. So I have given this just a really, really good. Scrubbing over, still kept all that lovely patina on there, and giving the, the grill plate and the ash pan a really good clean, and and the fire sticks because they always end up getting a lot of soot and that on them. So I'm happy with that. Oh my days state of this water it is absolutely minging and that just shows you i mean i know a lot of it's coming off the brillo pads and that but um just how much crap you can actually accumulate on this if it's not kept so what we're going to do now is we're going to take this indoors and um i'm just going to do the last couple of bits um drying it off going through how i dry it and and the oiling process and then that'll be it so we'll catch you in a bit right we're all good we're all set using the kitchen so we don't get told off okie doke listen i'm not teaching anything majorly comprehensive or anything here you know i'm not trying to teach you how to suck eggs or stuff like that but this is just something I think is important to sort of show that you actually do yourself and what you actually do because some people might pick up a couple of little tips you know about you know the resin collecting and in the, the smaller little portholes and that that are along long here and um, you know it's just a good practice to get into I, always always stick by that saying that if you look after your kit your kit will look after you so we are just gonna cap next feed in. give it a good good dry off really good dry off all four sides and you'll still get some grime come off now i've wanted to really sort of keep you know the patina on this yeah if i wanted to get it stripped right back i could do that instead of using a brillo, brillo pad so i'd use a proper really hard scourer and that would really sort of take it back to almost that stainless look of it but that's that's not what i'm i'm about I'm not not with this this is the patina on this okay tells a story okay and all them pictures all them posts all them videos that this is in it tells a story and that's what I want to keep on there. It reminds me of what this firebox actually means to me, you know? And it is, it's, it's, it's my number one piece of equipment for a very good reason. Just gonna do the insides. Just check the condition of that, otherwise we'll change it. Just do the insides, yeah? And it's simple, it's easy, yeah? This isn't rocket science, okay? 
but I get asked, how do you clean it? So this is why I'm doing it. Yeah, and we're just pushing that top, just so we can get to that and clean that, especially in the hinge area, because that's one of the main hinges where the bottom folds in on itself and then it concertinas in. Okay, yeah, and then we'll just try and keep that pushed up. Just gonna dry that. Right, that's good enough for me. That will go in the bin. Obviously, I'm gonna dry, you know, the, the grill plate and that separately. Right, what do I do now? Okay, okay. What's the cat up to? What are you up to? WD-40, I elaborated, elaborated on this earlier on. During the winter months, I like to use a proper lubricant on the hinges because it's gonna be seeing a lot of use in really wet and inclement conditions. Otherwise, you know, there's nothing wrong with using, you know, like a food grade oil and that, but it, it's gonna get burnt off pretty quickly once it gets fired up next time. But for me, it's just a process that I actually like to, to go through knowing that it's just a little dribble, nothing too major. Come on, up your work, there we go. Not going too mad, doesn't need to go too mad. Doing this before she comes home, she'll be like, What's that smell? Yeah, WD 40. <laughs> Just get in on those hinge bits, let that oil go in. Again, down on the windbreak flap. Give that a good squirt, give that a good soak. Then I'm just gonna give it a, a light covering all over. Now, while I've been doing this, the oven's on. Yeah, this is gonna sound crazy to some of you. Yeah, the oven is on. And then what I'm gonna do is, just on a low heat, the oven's on a low heat, and then I'm just gonna give this a good dry. Just on the front surfaces, constantly moving and turning it around because then while we're doing that, that oil is penetrating into the actual hinges rather than just keeping it up on the one plane of motion. In a horizontal, we just keep turning it, moving it, wiping off any real excess of the WD-40. Other lubricants are available. Get in there, in that top. Boom, there we go. Shiny, 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 shiny. And that's nice. In there, in we go. Right, and then all we're gonna do, I'm just gonna turn you around. Muck it in the oven. Gas mark seven, 10 minutes. <laughs> it doesn't matter about the temperature. And we're just gonna let the heat get into that. It'll expand a little bit with the heat. And, that, and again, that will enable, before it burns off, the oil to actually work its way through the hinge ports. And uh, just gonna pop you on pause while that happens. Just got that out of the oven. Obviously it goes without saying. <laughs> That gets seriously, seriously hot in the oven, okay? Just for about 10 minutes. And you don't need to do that. It's just an extra step that I take. It's a way of knowing that that, that is gonna get really hot in the oven, okay? It's gonna expand any moisture and that that's in there is gonna get burnt off. The oil is gonna seep down and then get burnt, burnt off from that to a degree in the hinges. And it's just an extra little thing that I find works really well. There you go, firebox stove maintenance. You know, you can use this on other um, stoves, wood, gas, and fire stoves. It's just a cleaning regime to get into and that. So people ask me about it, there you go. 
Thanks for tuning in. Catch up again soon. Bye.